Hi and welcome to the 10 forumscom In this video you will see how to set up Hyper-V in Windows 10 to be ready for your first virtual machine. By default, the Hyper-V is not installed. To install it, you need to add the Hyper-V feature from Programs and Features, turn Windows features on or off. To start with, right-click the Start button and select Programs and Features. On the left pane, select Turn Windows features on or off, select Hyper-V and click OK. Windows will now add the feature and needs to be restarted before you can use the Hyper-V. After the restart, search for Hyper-V Manager and start it. Select your host on the left pane. Or click Connect to Server on the right pane and select Local Computer and click OK. Now you can set the default working folders and change other Hyper-V settings. Select Hyper-V settings on the right pane. It is totally OK to simply accept the default locations for virtual hard disks and virtual machine configuration files. However, because I want them to be saved on a dedicated drive, I need to change the defaults. Let other settings stay as set by default. We will look into these advanced settings more in depth in future videos. Click Apply and OK when done. To communicate with the network and internet, all Hyper-V virtual machines need to use a virtual switch between the virtual network adapter on the virtual machine and the physical network adapter on your host PC. The virtual machine network adapter connects to a switch, which then connects to host network adapter. An external switch will connect a virtual machine to host network adapter. If the host network adapter is connected to internet, the virtual machine will also have internet access. If the host network adapter has no internet access, the network will still work allowing the host and the virtual machine to communicate with each other, for instance for file and media sharing and so on. Using an internal switch, the virtual machine can communicate with other computers and virtual machines on the same subnet but has no internet access. And last, the private switch. With it, a virtual machine can communicate with other virtual machines on same Hyper-V server, but cannot communicate with host PC, nor has it internet access. Here's a typical host setup before creating the switches. The host is connected to network with wired adapter. The wireless adapter is at the moment not connected. The second Ethernet adapter shown is a TAP adapter created when Hyper-V was enabled. To create your virtual switches, select Virtual Switch Manager on the right pane of the Hyper-V Manager, select New Virtual Network Switch, select the switch type, External, Internal or Private and click Create Virtual Switch. Name the switch. 
If creating an external switch, select a network adapter it will be connected to. One host network adapter can have only one external switch at any given time connected to it. Be sure to allow host OS to share the network adapter. Click apply to save the switch. Ok, I have now created an external switch and connected it to my host wired adapter. I will do an external with the wireless adapter 2 plus an internal and private switches. When everything is done, I click OK to save the settings and exit the virtual switch manager. When you create external switches, your host starts to use them instead of its own network adapters. The host adapters are still there and working, but as they are now tied to external switches, all communications have to go through a switch, even the host's own network and internet connection. Hyper-V does not support wireless networking. When an external switch is created using a wireless host adapter, Hyper-V creates a so-called network bridge. The wireless adapter on host is connected to this bridge, and the bridge is then connected to the external switch, which is seen as a wired connection by the virtual machine. More information about virtual switches and how to use them can be found in the tutorial at our sister site, The Eight Forums. Please see the video description for the link. That's it for now. We have set up Hyper-V and created the virtual switches and are now ready to create our first virtual machine. That will be the topic of the next video. See you then.